Hello everyone and welcome to my review part one of the Spectratome Blue mouthpiece by Harrelson. Um, if you watched my previous video I did it over yellow. This is the exclusive yellow body and the depth of cup and they had their own throats exclusive to that one which you can still get is just um, that Kickstarter is over and this one is the next one right now. I think they're working on getting those shipped out probably sometime in September, if I remember correctly. But with Spectratone Blue now, we have some differences between yellow and I will show you them. I mean, first off, the body's different, obviously exclusive, but these components all are red brass now. So I think the others were just yellow brass. This contains more copper content, if I remember correctly, and it has less lead content, which is I think why Jason was doing it. But other than that, it is still a 5mm mouthpiece because it comes with five components, the body, the backbore, throat, cup, and the rim. Uh, this cup is unfinished, not silver, just because I'm just demoing it and reviewing it. I'll send this back to Jason. He'll get that plated later. You will get yours plated, everything except the throat and backbore and body if you didn't get silver or gold plating. But um, compared to the yellow, um, sometimes you can still get, you know, the throats here. This shows you how much, how wide open it is. 155.22, I think that's thousands of an inch, if I remember correctly. And you can get that bigger or smaller if you want. Um, we'll get to the cup here in a second. But again, the R means it's red brass. So again, everything is red brass, more copper content. I believe that makes it more efficient because it's, I want to say, maybe a tad heavier. But that's the throat, uh, the back bore, same thing here with like the yellow, again, just R red brass, so it will look a little bit different. But the first number here is how it starts, like the diameter, and then the ending one is how it ends. So you see 22 to 36, that's quite a bit of a difference. And you'll notice here, this part's thinner because it actually opens up more. Uh, let me see, this one, I don't remember the, my yellow, yeah, 2133, so it's a little bit smaller difference, so you can see how that's thicker because it's not opening as up, up as much. As always, you have a choice of rims that you want, and Harrelson makes um, five different rims now, and different profiles, um, I can show you here. If you go to their website, it's always been there. There we go. So I'll put this on the screen too to show you the difference between them all because I wanted to actually show you that because that's kind of something you don't want to mess up. You know, if you're someone that's used to playing Bach mouthpieces, Yamaha, or things that are just more round because these get pretty flat at the end here. We're talking like, I don't know if any of you have ever played, I played an Alhurt Jet Tone mouthpiece and it was a very flat rim. Of course, back then, I my braces were off not too long after, so uh, my front teeth were actually very flat together and I found that that really works on the flat but now that one's overlapping the other it feels like I can't play flat as more so maybe that's one thing you need to like keep in mind is your dental structure when you want to choose a rim on a mouthpiece if it's very flat teeth maybe you would actually be fine with semi-flat flat or very flat but if you're like me now and it's not as much flat maybe a tooth is kind of overlapping just a tad then stick with the standard or wide which we'll get to that here this is a 604 there you go you can see it now so right here 604 that's the standard it's just kind of round I'll show you this one one more time as well and if you don't see this the wide that is the same like you know um, curvedness of the standard but the outer diameter is bigger so these numbers here are referring to the inner diameter, like the inner part there. And I believe I was told that they measure that it was like 120 thousandths of an inch down in or something. I think that's where you call the alpha angle or whatnot, but that's how they measure those. Like the inside part here is going to be the 604. And if you got a wide, it would still be that on the inside. However, the top, you know, where the highest point is, it would come out, it would be higher, like further out. So that's why it's a wide, which I think that's probably what I'm gonna end up getting because this feels a tad too small. 
but I don't necessarily have to go to the 614. You can kind of go in the middle, do the one, the wide, and maybe you'll prefer that. So that's another thing to keep in mind if you decide to get multiple rims as well. And they also have a conversion shard if you ever want to see what you're playing. Let's say I have a Monet B2L, then I have an idea of what I want to get. That's the 604 semi-flat, but he's had this for a while up there as well. And throat sizes, he's got all sorts. You might, this might, yeah, you might not need to look at as much. Um, with how this works, he already has the correct throat lined up with the right cup. That kind of determines like what size, how it is like that. Remember, if you have like a more shallow cup, it's gonna go up or deeper, then this throat needs to be smaller. Let's see, there's also compression variations that he has, which I think I'm sure he'll still sell to you if you ask. Uh, there's different types. You can see like there's like these triple ridge ones that they still have it, but he has plenty of different variations of the compression variations rather than say the normal which you see it kind of funnels in there a lot uh, difference there is that it affects your articulation so if you want more punchiness on your articulation then consider a compression throat if you want to get a second one otherwise you know maybe just experiment get maybe I like really tight ones you want to get a 145 or something or if you really want to get something really open a 160 um, when you Really, if you start to make these throats bigger, your sound becomes bigger because, I mean, you gotta have more, you're gonna be pushing more air through at one time, so that, but at the same time, that if it gets too big, realize that it could feel constrained to you just because you're not used to it, so. Again, a lot of things that you wanna keep in mind, and they'll, again, they'll explain this when you do your survey, if you ordered it, and you'll, they'll help you find the right fit. And again, here's the different variations of the back bores, oh, looks like yeah, you could get yellow brass, so if you want, red brass will just be a little bit more. But again, if you're doing the vectors on blue, it's gonna come with all red brass, so that part's already taken care of for you. But that's basically it for the Spectrotone Blue, kind of just looking at it. Um, as far as how it's done for me so far, I've it's really interesting, like maybe things to keep in mind, the cup shape. He does have different cup shapes that you could get. This, you'll see the 604 here. That has to match the rims, that way it, it is like seamless and everything. But on the back side, H, that's the depth. It goes from like A till J, and I think it goes further than that. Um, it just gets deeper and deeper. And then the second letter, is the shape which i don't remember what b is actually a was a more standard one it was somewhat of not really compression cup but a very standard one there is a v variant with like more v cup which some prefer v cups let me see what i have in my yellow fa okay that's when they came with it so a standard cup But what I was going to get at is that it's interesting. Um, because the throat has to be a throat, it's not like you just uh, did the entire mouthpiece just however you wanted. Like each one has to fit correctly. It seems that it kind of comes in like a compression throat and then like it goes like that and then dives off. So that definitely feels different than what I'm used to. And it actually affected... I think the feedback on how it played. So there's a lot you can do with this system. Like the different cups will definitely affect um, feedback, maybe sometimes more so than the throat if you just kind of stay in a certain range. That's There's a lot of things you can mess around with. The backboard, you know, that's if you want it to go small to big, that's gonna spread your sound out a little bit more. If you want it more straight, that will just make it more um, direct. But let's, we will go ahead and get into the next part and I will kind of try to do some recordings for you. Hopefully do a spectra, um, a spectrum analyzer analysis to show you the difference made between um, these two, the yellow and the blue. And perhaps I can do a few recordings where it's just me playing 
and you can hear the difference between each and then I can do maybe a, an ensemble one that should give us an idea of like kind of what this is for. Uh, another thing I'll probably try is put in my coronet actually because by the time you're getting into something this deep I kind of think it would work really good for coronet and actually let's say you want to do something like that um, you can get a backbore for a coronet if you want. You don't have to get the trumpet, you can get the coronet, you can get um, flugelhorn, that would be the smaller shank flugelhorn, so that's an option too. I really think this is probably gonna be a coronet mouthpiece for me, but you know, it's, I know I'm always open to try new things, so I'll see you in the next video and we will check it out. Now we will do the blind test. I'll be playing three pieces, each one twice. I won't tell you which mouthpiece I'm doing until the end, but hopefully with this test you can discern the difference between each one and hopefully understand which spectra tone you'd be looking for to meet your playing style and what sound you're going after. The first piece will be Eric Hawazen's Concert Fanfare. It will just be the intro. Next we will have the opener, it's a big band chart by Tim Gill. It'll be at the end and just the four trumpets in the trumpet section. And then I will end it with Charlier number two. So for the first one, Eric Wazen's Concert Fanfare, the first one was the Spectre Tone Yellow, and the second one was the Spectre Tone Blue. Now, it wasn't as apparent immediately for me, I don't know about you, but I had to listen to it a few times, and I kind of at least knew what to look for. Um, the only difference between these mouthpieces was the body, 
and the cup and throat. The rim was the same. The backboard was the same. I just used the red brass one from the Spectratone Blue. Not that that would really affect sound, but just for consistency's sake. The body doesn't make a difference. They're both pretty efficient and uh, won't affect, it won't make it darker or anything. So, um, with that being said, perhaps you, if you hear the beginning of some notes uh, with the Spectratone Yellow, you do get more attack. I think it's really good with the attack um, for the fanfare parts. Very discernible between shorter notes. However, it didn't really work so well for the low notes. And as the person playing it, I could feel that as well. I didn't. I couldn't really get much volume on those lower notes, and so it wasn't really bottom heavy. It was quite top heavy. It did make the higher notes, mainly in the first trumpet, easier. Um, there's that small little solo where the first trumpet plays it, and you could probably tell more, more punch, more edge to the sound that you might want to cut through the rest of the ensemble, not as much in the blue, although it still sounded good. Now, the blue did sound good in low register, however, the articulation just wasn't quite there, and... It wasn't necessarily hard to play high or anything. Um, it, it just really comes down to, I guess, what you're preferring. It seemed to me like if you had like the lower trumpets on Spectratone Blue and the tops on Spectratone Yellow, it would be the perfect balance. It would work just fine. Uh, other than that, I think uh, the throat in the Spectratone Yellow, it's a specific type of throat. It's not quite a compression cup. That's going to help with your articulation. So that's another thing to keep in mind. You can change out the throats in the Spectratone and 5mm system. And again, that can suit your sounds to whatever you like. For the second one, the opener by Tim Gill. It kind of seemed like both on the shorter notes had a really good articulation. Like when it was just short, sparse and it was getting a little bit higher in the higher range. It seemed pretty similar. Well, if you had noticed, maybe the high notes at the end, like uh, F-sharp, I didn't hold out quite as consistently on the second one, and maybe you immediately thought that was Spectratone Blue, because a deeper mouthpiece would be tougher to sustain higher notes for most players, and that's true. The second one was Spectratone Blue, and the first was, again, Spectratone Yellow. It didn't necessarily affect affect my range just being able to access the notes but yeah being able to play it very vibrantly and louder and just consistently playing it yeah it, a deeper cut mouthpiece for me that's a lot tougher to do the yellow was very easy to do in that regards other than that um despite a lot of the articulations feeling the same on the ones that were maybe lower register there were a few where the blue, it didn't necessarily feel mushy, but didn't feel as pronounced. The yellow definitely had that vibrancy on the front end of the notes. And so, I mean, yeah, this is this is a similar one where I guess you could put the lowest person on blue, but nothing was really super low. And I think the Spectratone yellow would be just fine for a big band chart like that. Because that's really the sound you want. You want it a little bit brighter, you want it to punch through. You want it to sparkle, especially when it gets higher. So, um, you maybe if uh, you ever played in now more of a combo setting, you don't always need that type of a sound. You can go more of a mellow, mellow sound. So, the Spectratone Blue would work just fine for that. And uh, again, I play I played the blue when I was like in a second line band in St. Louis and I was still playing high notes just fine it yeah it has plenty of volume in its notes but the yellow would have been easier for articulation and all that and just sustaining high notes so again it's the whole point's just to fit the player you can always change out other things like the throat itself and the uh, cup if you really wanted to you know that the whole point of the Spectratone Blue is that it is a deeper cup and yellow is a shallower cup. 
And finally, for the last one, the Charlier, that one is the only one where I flipped it. So the first one was Spectratone Blue. The second was Spectratone Yellow. And now in a more solo setting, it may become apparent with the Spectratone Yellow. Sometimes my low notes with that throat, the yellow throat specifically, they get airy. And that's apparently not supposed to happen, everybody. It might just be, I think, how I play more downstream, I guess. According to Jason, when he had these compression throats, they're even more shallow than the yellow throat. If you didn't play with your airstream going straight through, you'd get that airy sound. So that is also another thing to keep in mind. But I could have easily changed out the throat on the yellow, and it would have sounded fine on the low notes after that. Other than, I mean, I know like the articulation maybe didn't, I was doing, I wasn't like hitting it really hard. I was playing more legato. So maybe you didn't notice that as much, but I think the sustain of the notes in this case, rather than the front end of the notes, that's where you can kind of tell which one was which. On some of the higher notes with the yellow, it seemed to have a more vibrant sound, um, I guess you could call it the sparkle sound, I'm not sure, where you could hear like more of, I guess you could call it the upper overtones, but there is something there you just notice, and I'm playing into a mic like two feet away, so you're going to get basically the raw sound. I'm sure it would sound different in a setting where you were at the back of an orchestral hall, or you were outside, and there's just marching bands, so again, all things to keep in mind, but the blue in this case was what I preferred took any edge that I wouldn't have wanted it off. It kept it very melodical and subtle and just darker in general. Um, now to say it wasn't as dark as I thought it was going to be compared to the yellow. It was in a lot of places very similar. It wasn't until I you know, started pushing it to a higher dynamic. Again, that's also something else to keep in mind. These <laughs> Changing the mouthpiece isn't magical or anything. It's just... It's just another tool to get the sound that you're looking for. And also how it feels, essentially, like on the Charlier with the blue. It felt better because I feel like I wasn't forcing anything. It just, it, I just was able to just let the trumpet play. I didn't have to try any harder than I needed to because the sound didn't, didn't bite anything or too hard. It just felt very lyrical it made the job really easy that's kind of what you need to look at with playing you know um what's the right tool for the job um, it's not like playing dark is always a great thing it's not like a bright sounds a bad thing like they both can be preferred for whatever you're playing and as far as if i recommend spectra tone blue not really um and I say that in the way that someone just jumping right into it, they have other options. So maybe it just depends on your situation. If you have Spectratone Yellow already, I mean, if you don't need that exclusive Spectratone Blue body, then no, you, why, why would you buy another one? Um, as, as long as, you know, you can just change out the components of your Spectratone Yellow, then I see no reason why you can talk with the Harrelson team they can tell you like what cups go with each what would be Spectratone color and you can just go from there um, if you're on a low budget then yeah definitely I wouldn't necessarily recommend it uh, it's it is a lot of money and I get it Jason's already mentioned that he's already losing money from making these because that's a lot of, that's a lot of CNC machining that's a lot of brass it's a lot of plating uh, there's a lot that goes into it, without a doubt. It's still a $200 mouthpiece if you get the early bridge special or it was like the pre-launch before. Now, that being said, that doesn't mean you, you shouldn't do 5mm to start with. There is a 5mm community on Facebook where I'm sure if you kind of asked around, maybe you could get a body for a lot cheaper. Like, there are plenty of other bodies, and the body doesn't really affect the sound. It just affects the efficiency of the mouthpiece. So you can still get into the 5M system probably for a lot cheaper through 
used parts and everything like that. But if you're new to it and you do have some money to spend, then yeah, I would recommend Spectre Tone Blue. It is a good way to get into it. Maybe you do like that body. Maybe you do like the whole concept that Jason's putting out there, and now he makes everything in red brass, and that's really cool. There's less lead content and everything. You just want to support him, and I understand that. In that case, yeah, I would definitely recommend Spectre Tone Blue. Or if, you know, specifically, it's like, well, I like having a deep cup. I like having dark sounds. This is literally the one for me, then yes, I would recommend doing this one, jumping on it. Otherwise, maybe you could wait for violet, maybe you could wait for green when it comes out, or if you're someone that is more of a lead player, like you still could, you could get other cups too and everything for that, you'll need a different throat obviously, but maybe you'll just, maybe you should wait until Spectre Tone Red and Orange comes out. But that is my review on the Spectre Tone Blue mouthpiece and if you haven't already you can like and subscribe to my channel i do a lot of recordings for trumpet and hopefully in the future jason will let me do more reviews on spectra tones that haven't came out yet if you have any questions on anything you can always leave a comment i'll try to get to it when i can or maybe jason will but other than that have a good day